G'day and welcome back to a very short introduction. I just wanted to thank Martin in Chicago in Illinois. He sent this book over to me. It's a Radiotron Designer's Handbook. It's the third edition. It's actually an Australian book. It was done by Amalgamated Wireless Valve Company there in Sydney. And this one reads 1941. So it's pretty old, but it still has all the basic theory and ideas that go into radio and this is something that I miss out on because I never had any formal training. Uh, something that he was quite taken with was this machine here. This is a valve evacuation machine I guess you call it. Um, they evacuate the tube, put the getter in there, I think they heat the elements up to uh, red hot and then seal it off. So it's all done fairly automatically. But other than that, look, there's so much information in the, here. Look at that. Input, conductance, cold input, charts, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. So this is really good background for someone like me. So, Martin, thank you very much. He also sent over this. It's a sport radio. He got this from a deceased estate sale. I think he got the book probably at the same place. But a little sport radio, he said, maybe the grandkids might like it. Uh, or perhaps auctioned it off at the club. Martin's also a member of the ARCI. It's the Antique Radio Club of Illinois. And he sent me this little booklet, their newsletter. And uh, it's got some interesting stuff in there. Some auction gear, uh, some stories, bit of history. Yeah, very interesting. He's also got his own little article in here. And... Uh, it's about um, him moving from ham, well not moving from, but moving into radio restorations. So he's doing AA5 radios. Yeah, it's an interesting little read there. So he's, he's well into that club. Here's another one that's the ARCI News. Um, and it's got Radio Fest is back in 2022. But once again, um, just some interesting stuff. Some of the members there. He's also written an article, and this was about a trip he did from, uh, where does he go, Sheridan in Indiana back to Chicago, and he was impressed how many AM radio stations there were, that, uh, so he's written a little article there about it, and he's actually sent me a list of Chicago, Illinois radio stations, there's about three pages of FM, but there's a couple of pages at the back here of AM radio, there's some, an oldie station. Uh, Spanish sports, religious, ethnic, country, uh, gospel, adult, nostalgia, Spanish news talk, news talk. Yeah, so they've all moved mainly away from music, but there's still a lot of stations there. Some of those can be rather interesting to listen to. Martin's obviously very proud to be living in Chicago. Uh, there's the map of the airport. He lives over here under my hand. Uh, so that was interesting. He also sent some postcards over. And mainly because of their photos of course not postcards but um, there's some images of Chicago at night and during the day now because Martin thought I was getting too thin he has sent me over a an order mix of candy and also wrap filled raspberries so I don't know what they are <laughs> it's not something we get here but um, oh well I'll eat them in good health he also sent over a bottle opener here with a photo of Chicago on the front there. There's a little magnet on the back, you can stick it on the fridge. So that'll be handy. And this wondrous thing here, it's got my name on it and it flashes on and off by magic. I assume it's just picking up ambient light to power it, but it's pretty, pretty cool. I haven't seen those before. Once again, thank you so much for sending all this over, Martin. My wife and I had a ball opening it. Every time we pulled something out, it was a different surprise. So very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Now, I do get other things sent over to me occasionally. Uh, I've got about four radios in boxes, and one's a record player, and I haven't opened them yet. I will do them as I get time. I appreciate when people send things to me, so if I haven't done it, don't think I don't appreciate it. I will get to them. I will do them all, and I'll get there when I can get a space between all the other stuff I've got. So anyone that sent anything to me, thank you very much for doing so. I will do them. And thank you everyone that contributes by buying me a coffee or super thanks. I don't ask for money particularly, uh, but if people can support me, that's fantastic. I really appreciate it. We'll go to the main feature. It's only a very short one. I hope you enjoy it. G'day and welcome back. 
Today I've got something a little bit different. It's a speaker that's not working. The owner was going to throw it in the bin and I said, hang on, I'll see if I can fix it. I need a bit of experience on repairing speakers, uh, so I thought I'll try this one out. If, if it all goes wrong, well, I haven't really lost anything. It's a 12-inch speaker. It's made by Magnavox in Australia. And if you look at the cone, the, the cone's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, there's a little hole over here. But apart from that, it's in pretty good condition. The problem with this one is the voice coil is open circuit. And if I put my probe here, uh, we get nothing. It's a zero or open loop. The voice coil is physically attached to the cone and it's immersed in the permanent magnet at the end here. The signal we want to listen to is AC, so it changes the polarity of the voice coil and that reacts in the magnet, pushing the cone in and out, and we can hear the result. It's a very simple circuit. It's a wire going into the voice coil, around the voice coil, and coming out the other end. So for that to be open circuit, there's a break somewhere in that wire. I've just noticed this magnet actually has been removed at some point. So I'll see if I can get it out. Might be able to lever it up on the edges here. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so that's oh, that's the wow. The voice coil is exposed. I didn't expect that. I thought I'd have to take the cone out to get to the voice coil. I'm just having a look here. Um, I can't see any burn marks. I can't see any open circuits in the coil here. It looks pretty good. I'm not sure where the break is. Now, if you look up in here, you can see it's got a flexible wire that goes down to the cone, and that allows the cone to move up and down. And from that wire, there's another wire running back and it's glued to the inside of the cone there. And it's the one that goes back to the voice coil. And it looks like it's going back into the cone there. I'll just turn it over. Somebody's glued this felt disc in here and of all things, they've used contact adhesive. So if I can remove that, I should be able to see the little wires running in there. Now, th these two points here are where that flexible braiding is attached. The wire for the coil runs underneath the cone here and it comes out here and you may be able to see there's one there. On this side it's the same, it runs under here and comes out over here, but that bit of wire is missing. I can see it in the adhesive here I think. So I'll try and melt that adhesive there and just see if I can expose the wire. I can connect it up again, run it back up to the little braiding up here and see if it fixes it. I've dipped the end of this applicator in acetone. I'll see if it will just melt the adhesive there and let me lift that wire up. I've been doing this for a few minutes now and I think the wire has just loosened. I think it moved. Yeah, there it is. I'll try and measure that wire. Okay, it's coming out at 0.16. I'll go and get a bit of wire. I have a bit of wire so I can connect it to this, but first I've got to try and clean off the enamel coating on the wire. I'll support it at the back with a screwdriver and just try and scrape that off. Here's the wire I'm going to use. It's about the same diameter. I've got a little capacitor here, low voltage, and I'll wind the wire around there a few times and just try and make a little spiral. Pretty hard to see there but yeah it is a little spiral. I'll see if I can get some solder in there. I think that's got it. I can see the solder on the old bit and the new bit of wire on there. I've attached the new wire to one end of my multimeter and here's the wire coming out of the coil there. I, I can see that it's bare. Yeah, so 12 ohms. Really good. I'll punch a little hole next to where the original hole was and I'll be able to feed that wire through there. Before I poke it through that hole, I'll just clear off this area here of enamel so I can attach it back here. I'll do that with a little flame torch. All right, there's the hole. I'll see if I can get it in there. there it is. So here's my new wire and I need to connect it to my flexible wire there. They usually solder it on the inside of the cone and then just put some glue around to hold it all. I'll see if I can get that glue off. I could just attach the wire uh, down here if I wanted to, but I'll see if I can do it the way they had it. 
I'll apply a little heat to it. It appears to be a, a fairly flexible adhesive. I can see the old lead in there. I'll snip it, I hope. So if I heat the inside bit of uh, adhesive, I should be able to push this back in. Maybe. Or pull it out or something. Maybe we can take it out. There it goes. There's the wire, and I'll just take the last of the adhesive off it. I'll try and remove the rest of this adhesive from the inside. Might. Oh, there it goes. I've wrapped the new wire around the flexible bit of wire there. I'll just solder it together. I can trim that off. Now hopefully I can poke that back through the same hole. There it goes, I think. Yes. Yeah, Alright. This is sitting pretty well now. I'll put some glue on here to hold all this. I need to glue down this new wire to the cone, make sure it doesn't move. But before I do that, I'll make sure I've got continuity. I've connected the meter up there, and if I touch this, we should get, I think it was about 12 ohms. There it is. Perfect. Alright. I'll glue all that together and we'll test out the speaker. Uh, the adhesive is almost dry, so I can put this magnet on. The uh, voice coil here has to go in this tiny slot. So I'm not sure how this is going to work, because normally you would have the magnet on, then you would put the voice coil in, centre it, and glue the spider on, and that would keep it centred. I'll put it that way and line it up with these here. And that lines up with the marks on the magnet, where the little tabs were pushed over. So I'll push it down. Uh, that's as far as that's going. I'll turn it over and see if it's rubbing. Mm, it's just barely rubbing. I'll caress it in to make sure it is sitting right down. Um, we'll see how that's... Uh, it might be, it might have just picked up a whisker of the edge. So what I'll do is run around with this little plastic strip and hopefully push away anything that's just hanging off the voice coil. It is a little bit ragged at the top there because the magnet's been pushed over it. And it does feel a bit tighter here. It doesn't feel bad now. And that is not touching. That is not touching. Fabulous. I'll attempt to push these back in with these channel lock pliers. And around here as well. Alright, I'll just run this out to the workshop for a minute, bend these tabs over properly, and I'll come back, but just make sure it's not rubbing again. The speaker's back together and it's ready for testing. I've just got an old uh, little realistic amp here to test it with. Um, it's on, oops, what's it on? AM. We'll go AM. And uh, we need to tune that into 612. There we go. That'll do. And I'll turn it up. We'll see if it works. Just a reminder, at Lara Pinta, closed due to flooding. Paradise Road between Radius Drive and Gardens Drive is flooded. Forget it. I'll be back after 9, ABC Radio Brisbane. Thank you, Brad. The time is 8.51. I'm John Taylor in for Rebecca Livingston. You're listening to... So, that sounds pretty good. I can't hear any scraping. The Australian Banking Association announced that... Uh, so I'll put it on FM again. And that should be already tuned in there. 103, that's the one I used to listen to. This is out of my old workshop. So, so I'll turn that up. 40 tomorrow. Uh, so give it... A I thought there might be some music on. I'll just wait till some music comes on and give it five seconds. We'll listen to that. AFM. I'm gonna have myself a real good time. So that's Queen, of course. I'll just let him get ahead a bit and turn it up again. Oh, he's still yelling. Hang on. I want the music. Okay, nothing wrong with that. I laser cut a new filter pad there. I'll glue that in. It does have a little bit of damage there and that little hole there, I'll repair those as well. I'll wrap it up, put it in the cupboard and keep it for a rainy day. 
I believe this will be out of a radiogram from the 60s. So if I get a radiogram one day that needs a new speaker, I've got one sitting there. Well, I learned a few things doing this, and I would have liked to have been able to try to remove the cone. I'm not going to do it now because it's working, but I was going to unglue the cone, pull it out, and repair the voice coil. But anyway, it's working as it is. I'm happy that it's working. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure.